Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's discuss another awesome thing which Vercel rolled out this week, which is Satori or Satori. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, but this is a engine. This is almost like an engine which converts your HTML and CSS to SVG. Now this is interesting because traditionally, the only way you can actually convert a document into a format, which is like image, like PNG or even SVG, was to take a screenshot using a headless browser. What that means is that you have to spin up a browser like Puppeter in the cloud if you want to take it on the cloud and take a screenshot, save it and then do whatever you want with it. The most common use case of this is for open graph images, which we have also discussed in this channel before, like how GitHub does open graph images and even we at CodeDAM do open graph images using the same technique. That is create the HTML first, run a browser, take the screenshot and send that image back as an open graph image. However, Vercel rolled out a new library which changes the game. It's much more performant, much smaller and compact in size, much faster in execution, gets all the benefits on the table. So let's take a look at what this library is all about. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. You see, if you go to github.com slash Vercel slash Satori, you will see that this library over here is open source. It's completely open source. You can use it on any sort of cloud provider you want and the api is pretty simple as well it accepts react component as the thing which you want to take a screenshot of so when i say react not exactly react it's, it's more like jsx and of course because it's a very small and compact library a very small and contact compact engine it does not support everything in html and even in css world and even in react world so you see it supports jsx elements that is only jsx elements that are pure and stateless you can use a few html elements not every single one of them but react apis like use state and use effect these things are not supported right well if you don't have a jsx transpiler satori technically accepts an object which is what jsx gets converted to eventually jsx is nothing but an object with you know the react style thing like what is the object type what is the prop what is the children what is the style and so on one of the things which is special about satori is that it does not guarantee that the output you're getting in html would be the same as the output you will get in svg because it uses is an SVG 1.1 spec and its own custom layout engine. A layout engine is how your browser understands what layout to draw, usually on the CSS and the HTML front. So Satori ships with a custom engine, a custom layout engine based on SVG 1.1 spec. You know what else ships with a custom layout engine? React Native. So if you remember, React Native is a technology which also supports kind of like CSS syntax, but not really, because React Native also ships with a custom layout engine. So you see, you can use a bunch of HTML tags not everything but you can see all the tags listed over here which is supported in satori you can see all the html tags which are supported over here you can use images and everything awesome but for the most part you would most likely use divs and text content to just surrender whatever you want as a SVG image. In terms of CSS, it uses the same Flexbox engine as React Native, that is Yoga, I think. Yeah, so you can see that React Native uses Yoga layout engine, which is an engine for, which is a lightweight, I think Flexbox engine itself. It does not support any other layout. So Satori supports that and it supports a bunch of CSS properties as well. It comes as a WASM binary. It comes as an ASM.js for browser runtime and a native module in Node.js, but WASM is also something which is universally supported. It can run on the server, it can run on the browser. So you can technically run Satori inside browsers as well. In fact, one of the good things about this is that if you go to this Versal OG image playground, you can play with this generated syntax. So you see on the right is an actual SVG image. And on the left, it's an actual code which generates this image. So if I write, go damn and let's say if i try to pass a prop or something which is you know just a course name html css right something like this and you see with a little bit of css changes you see this gets rendered as an image right you can choose the dimensions of the image usually it will be 16 to 9 for og open graph image you can do any and every sorts of image embedding svg embedding you can create text you want you can even support tailwind so it supports Tailwind CSS experimentally. You can see you can use the TW directive to add Tailwind classes, which again makes it extremely easy to use it with frameworks like Tailwind and render pretty neat open graph images. 
So it's a great tool, right? And you can see that it generates images pretty quickly within mostly under 10 milliseconds, five to 10 milliseconds. So that is an awesome way of generating open graph images. If you have been using the Puppeter approach, which GitHub also uses, maybe it is better to shift to an image system or an image generation system like this. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm pretty excited to see what Vercel rolls out in the Vercel conf, in the next year's conf, not the Vercel conf. I'm looking forward to it. And Vercel is one of those companies which always surprises by the things they are doing. So I'm excited to see what is next from them. That is all for this video. I'm going to see you in the next one really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.